Welcome back to the series of lectures in molecular spectroscopy for the Department of Chemistry, University of Lagos. I'm Dr. Wynne. So, we'll be talking about microwave spectroscopy in this series of lectures. We've talked about the introduction to molecular spectroscopy in the last series of lectures, and we, real we talked about uh, the different molecular energy levels in a molecule and the different motions present in a molecule. Here, we'll be talking about several topics the affecting microwave spectroscopy. Microwave spectroscopy is one of the um, spectroscopy used for determining molecular structure, and it is the basic principle behind the microwaves that we have in our kitchen. Anyway, so we'll be going through this outline. Talk about moment of inertia that's related to the resistance to motion, to so rotational motion. The molecules are classified based on this moment of inertia, so it helps in determining the molecular structure of the molecule. The easiest, simplest molecule is a diatomic molecule, considered at a rigid rotor approximation. We we'll look at specific selection rule that helps us to understand the spectrum of, a, uh, of the molecule better. And as um, everything is affected by temperature and isotopes, then we'll also consider the non-rigid rotor approximation. We'll talk about all this in the course of the lecture. Microwave spectroscopy studies the absorption and emission of electromagnetic radiation arising from rotation of molecule. This is considered in the microwave region, that's the microwave region, and in the far IR region of the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Remember that we mentioned that in the electromagnetic spectrum, it is divided based on the different motions present in the molecule. We have the nuclear motion, electronic motion, that's electronic excitation of electrons, vibration of bonds, rotation, and nuclear magnetism. So microwave studies rotation. The rotation of a molecule is a circular motion about a certain axis in the molecule. The axis can be within the molecule, and then we say it's a spinning motion. The axis can be outside the object. The blue object is orbiting outside, about a certain axis outside its uh, center of gravity. Two water molecules are rotating about uh, an axis that coincides with the center of gravity. Microwave spectroscopy studies the spinning motion that is related to the molecular structure of the molecule. Now, mole microwave spectroscopy is mostly carried out on gaseous sample. If we recall our O level chemistry, a gas sample, the Particles are in constant motion. They are not bound to each other as much as in the liquid or in the gaseous state. So they are able to rotate freely, like in the liquid state and in the gaseous state, where free rotation is impossible due to the stronger intermolecular forces present in them. So one of the major applications of uh, microwave spectroscopy is in bond length determination and because a lot of molecules have been determined it is usually used in space and astronomy to study the chemical composition of that interstellar medium occasionally it is used in, to study reaction mechanism and it has the advantages that it has a high resolution it's highly sensitive and best of all it's non-destructive Okay, so now that we have talked about rotation, so 
What are the general properties of the molecules that can be observed with microwave spectroscopy? Now, that's where we talk about the general selection rules. We recall there are general that the, the selection rules are quantum mechanical rules that determines which transition is possible. And um, the general selection rule talks about the the main properties of a molecule that you, that you can study with that particular spectroscopy. For microwave spectroscopy, the molecule must be polar. That is, there must be separation, a net separation of charges. And when that happens, you see the dipole moment is not equal to zero. So this can interact with the electric field of the electromagnetic radiation. We recall the electromagnetic radiation is made up of both electric and magnetic components. And this creates a torque such that the molecule can rotate. Examples of some polar molecules and non-polar molecules that is given, the carbon dioxide is not polar, the water molecule is polar, the, these pictures are taken from the chemistry textbook Brooks and Paul Thompson. Um, CCL4 has a net dipole moment of zero, um, um, this is similar to ammonia, it also has a net dipole, so we can observe this in the microwave spectrum. We can observe this water molecule in the microwave spectrum. Then if we look at the this uh, different geometric isomers of uh, dibromoethane, cis one to dibromoethane has a net dipole pointing in that direction. So we can study it with the microwave spectrum. However, the trans cannot be observed in the microwave spectrum. Now, the fact that these molecules, the CO2 molecule, the methane molecule, CCL4, one trans one to dibromoethane, the fact that um, these molecules have no net dipole does not mean they do not rotate. However, a microwave radiation will not cause them to rotate. We can observe some rotation. Maybe, maybe within ele electronic excitations, but those are not referred to as pure rotational spectrum. The most, um, so that's that about the general selection rule. We will talk about the specific selection rule in another video. Now, a rotating object always has a force in which it rotates. And there's some form of resistance that can be observed. The moment of inertia measures the resistance to rotation. So the higher the inertia, then the more difficult it is for the molecule to rotate. The lower the inertia, the easier it is for the molecule to rotate. What? is the formula for the moment of inertia. Mathematically, it is given as the mass, the summation of all the mass present. So we have mass multiplied by the square of the rotating distance. Now, Ri is the distance from rotating others. So please, not Ri squared, Ri, that's the distance from the axis of rotation it is not the bond length. So if we consider this hypothetical molecule, Ma, 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 at this rotating distance, Re, from the rotating axis, from the axis of rotation. We also have Md, another Md, another Md here. Axis of, uh, distance from axis of rotation is Rd. Then Ma, Mb, Axis distance from rotating axis is zero, and MC distance from rotating axis is also zero. The SI unit is mass times the unit of R squared. So if we consider this molecule again, 
So I is M A R squared plus M A R squared plus M A R squared. That gives us the three M A R squared. M B R B is zero, so it's not an equation. Similarly, R C is zero, and we also have three atoms of M D, three atoms D with mass M D. So M D R D squared plus M D R D squared plus M D R D squared that gives us three m d r b squared so this is a, a moment of inertia for this molecule so it's obvious from the structure that the moment of inertia is related to the structure of the molecule because once we get the rotating distance the bond length can be related to this distance one this angle is no. So how can we obtain I? Obtain I, it can be obtained from the spectrum. And once we get I, we can determine the bond length of the molecule. So there's a sample calculation here. The moment of inertia of the water molecule around the axis defined by the bisector of the HOH angle. The HOH bond angle it's a good idea to always list the parameters from the question so here we have sketched the water molecule bond distance rh the bond distance between o and h is 95.7 picometers the rotating distance we have um, taken this to be rh and then the bond angle is 104 the rotating axis bisects this so we have this angle to be 104.5 divided by 2. So R i, the moment of inertia which we have to calculate, is m h r h squared plus m o r o squared plus n h r h squared. We're given the mass of hydrogen. From the question, we don't have the mass of oxygen. So let's calculate R h, trigonometric relationship, R h. That is the opposite to the angle, and OH bond length is the hypotenuse to that angle. So we have this at a RH is 95.7 sine, so 105.105 105 divided by 2. RO is 0, so hence we don't need the mass of oxygen. With that, we can calculate MH. RH and that's given as 1 for 1.97 times 10 to minus 47 kilogram meter squared. The moment of inertia is often used to classify molecules into different types. It is based, the classification is based on its resolution along three perpendicular axes A, B, and C. These axes are present in the molecule. They are with the molecule. They pass through the center of motion, center of gravity of the molecule. And they are different from X, Y, and Z axes, which are a lab reference coordinate system. The Axis A, B, and C moves with the molecule. So if the molecule rotates, the axis rotates. The X, Y, and, X, y, and C axis do not rotate. So for along each axis, we have IA, that's the print moment of inertia along the A axis, moment of inertia along the B axis, and moment of inertia along the C axis. They are usually not equal to each other. But the convention is that IA is less than IB and is less than IC. So the classification according to the moment of inertia, IB equal to IC and IA negligible, then CO. For symmetric molecules, two of them are equal and one of them is different. The spherical top molecules, the three of them are equal. And for the asymmetric top molecules, Three of them are different. So we continue with linear molecules in the next video.